This is the Evolve 3 Notebook, also known as the Maestro 11 eBook. It's available at Micro Center for $79.99 right now. So I figured I'd take a look. Here we go. All right, so we're going to open the box up and see what's inside. Got to cut it open. No problem. And as we open it up, we'll find the contents include one notebook covered in foam. So let's get that out of there. Come on. All right, underneath that we got some empty space and then a little box containing the power adapter. Yep, there it is. So this is a pretty standard 12 volt, 2 amp power adapter with a barrel plug. It's got fairly solid construction. Nothing too crazy, but it'll work. Yep. So now on to the laptop. Here it is in the wrapping. Let's get that off of there. Oh boy. Yep, and we'll take a little tour of the outside. On the one side, we've got the mini HDMI port, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. We've got a SIM card slot for LTE connectivity, USB 3.0, and the power adapter goes right there. Here's the back. Nothing much to show there. Nothing at all. And the other side, We've got a headphone jack, a USB 2.0 port, and a micro SD slot. The front, not much to speak of, and not much to grip on, which you'll see will be a problem later. And going around to the back, we got the sticker back here that says it has a 5500 milliamp hour battery. And then we've got the rubber foot feet right there, and a pair of stereo speakers. Yep, let's open her up. Nope, not easy. Here we go. And there's a screen protector applied, but it is a matte finished screen. And uh, here's the keyboard and touchpad. It's not that great. Feels like those cheap keyboards that you get with tablet cases, cheap tablet cases. Uh, it'll work, but the keys are pretty small, and the touchpad, it's not that great. Um, yep, so here's some measurements. So we got about 11 inches long, and then 7.5 inches wide. And maybe three quarters of an inch thick at the thickest part. Here's the weight. That would be two pounds, 3.7 ounces. All right, so I cracked it open on the back. I didn't crack it, but opened it up. Here's that. Here's a closer look at the board. You can see there, uh, components and the battery. Here's a closer look. Yep, we got everything integrated, system on a chip, but there is a card for the LTE. I'm not sure exactly what details those are, but uh, that's the only thing you can remove, it looks like, and the battery, of course. Uh, yep, that's that. Uh, let's try and open it again. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. All right, so we're going to just boot it up first boot. I'm going to rush through this so you don't have to sit there and wait. Yep, took a little while, but... Not to be expect unexpected. Yep. All right, let's skip this, and we're at Windows. All right, so I figured I would check the system just to see what's going on, and we have the basic specs shown here. It's running Windows Pro Education, and yep, that's about it with that. There's not many applications installed other than some things for the LTE. I haven't messed with those, but that's the only thing other than the standard Windows installation stuff. Uh, the battery was at 56%, as you can see. Three hours and some left. And for storage, we have a 64 gigabyte BiWin brand MMC chip. Yep, there it is, right there. And let's take a look at the BIOS here. There's a lot of settings in here. It's quite extensive. Uh, take a look. It's got DDR4 memory. It's in dual channel configuration. That's onboard RAM, of course. And there's all kinds of stuff you can change in the BIOS, so it could be useful for, for some people. So take a moment to check it out, and I'll stop talking for a little bit.
now we're going to boot into Linux, Linux Mint. So we'll let that go. I skipped over a little bit of the boot process for brevity. Um, so yeah, first boot works pretty well, but unfortunately the Wi-Fi is not um, it's not discovered. It's a Realtek 8723DU USB adapter. It's internal. Um, the native drivers don't show up for that. You should be able to get it working, but it does not work out of the box. So that's a wireless N card, 2.4 gigahertz only. So it's not the greatest Wi-Fi chip, but uh, here's some of the system info from in Linux, just to have a look at it. Bluetooth seems to be functioning. And uh, let's check out the screen, for better or worse. Here we go. I'll try to give you a range of viewing angles up and down, left and right. You can see it's not very good. It's a classic TN panel. Contrast is not great. Viewing angles are not great. Um, here's the side to side. And then going through the brightness, of course, it uses PWM. It's fine on full brightness, but as you turn it down, the camera is sensitive to the uh, flicker, as you'll see. You don't see it, you know, the human eye doesn't see it, but some people may be more sensitive to that than I am. Here's a little bit of the uh, brightness as I lower it and raise it. It doesn't look like that in real life, but the camera picks it up. And next we're going to do a speaker test. I just have some YouTube videos playing. Hopefully it's not an issue. So yeah, the sound quality is not that bad. It's not, you know, there's no bass obviously, but it's pretty clear and it gets pretty loud. Sound comes out of both speakers, so it seems that stereo is working. Um, so yeah, it's, it could be worse, I'd say. And here I'm gonna test the two megapixel webcam. Picture quality doesn't seem too bad actually, so check it out. All right, to summarize, I could say this laptop, it's not that great. For $79.99, I suppose you do get a lot, but none of it is particularly good. Um, I can't really recommend it unless you have a really specific use. It's not that great. So let's pack it back up. Yep, that's it. Thank you.